Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One and we are back after a week of Team of the Year stuff in between seasons. It's time to get cracking with season number two. Of course, we won the Champions League and the Capital One Cup last year so we're looking to improve across the board to try and compete on all four fronts. And as always with the uh, with the pre-season friendlies, I'll just show you the, uh, the goals or the key highlights. You see how the goalkeeper was able to keep out that flurry of shots, I do not know. But we were going to take the lead a little bit later through Eden Hazard but again as always through the transfer window and pre-season it'll only be two games per episode please do bear that in mind because of course you have a lot of transfer activity going on as well so once we get out of the transfer window we'll be back up to uh, to three games per episode and of course once we hit the season proper we'll be more in depth with the uh, with the analysis of the games and the highlights etc but of course as always with pre-season friendlies it's just goals or key highlights but we're looking to strengthen up top I want to get rid of Diego Costa I was very very disappointed with him last year we paid £23 million. He did not deliver on that £23 million. So we're looking to shift him out. We're looking to bring in big, big replacements. As you can see, we're using or trying to use him as bait to try and lure in Neymar or Mario Balotelli at present. We're just trying to see if we can get an offer accepted to start with because, of course, uh, whether Milan or Barcelona actually want Diego Costa is another point. But uh, we're putting a couple of offers in there. We're actually going to have to jump into the second friendly because there wasn't too much action between the first and the second. But this is a bigger one. This is a lot bigger one. Barcelona away from home. As you can see, Thibaut Courtois starting in goal, trying to uh, to prove to me that he's worth a start in the first team. Of course, he's been out on loan at Atletico Madrid in the first season and he needs to prove to me that he is worth replacing Petr Cech in the starting lineup. No better way to do that than against a familiar opposition for him, Barcelona, of course, playing in La Liga last season. And as you can see, <laughs> Dirk Kaut is the Barcelona player to set up the first goal. It's actually Neymar that pops it into the back of the net with a really, really tidy finish. And of course, we are hella interested in bringing Neymar to Chelsea Football Club if we possibly can. And Neymar in this game was just showing me exactly what he would bring if we were able to bring him to Stamford Bridge. He was absolutely dominant the entire game. Ran the game up top. There was no Messi to start off with on the pitch. And uh, not not really too many uh, standout Barcelona players in uh, in the forward third. You had like Christian Teo and uh, they didn't have a first team goalkeeper either. It was, I honestly cannot even remember his name. It was a guy that I genuinely have never heard of before. But Andre Scherler, our player of the year last season, 2013-2014, was able to bring us back on level terms. And Fernando Torres is going to come close here. Only minutes of the second half, trying to uh, trying to show some dominance on the game, hold on to possession, get a grip of the fixture and get ourselves in front. And Torres was going to get his header from the corner. Drawing the uh, the corner in the first place from uh, from a decent move, as piece set him up, or oh, Kevin De Bruyne, I think, played the ball inside, and then it's a nice headed finish for Fernando Torres, but that is just the slickest of balls through to Neymar. They're unfortunate with the first effort, square it across. What is Thibault Courtois doing? We've uh, I mentioned in the early run in the commentary, I'm looking to him to prove a point to me as to why he deserves to be in the first team heading into the su uh, heading into the season proper, and he's not going to do it. He's not going to prove it to me by doing things like that. I was trying to clear the ball with uh, Branislav Ivanovic, I think it was, at the back post. Hammering B, just trying to clear it, and he's just run at me. Kicked Ivanovic in the shin, and Neymar's able to slot the ball into the back of the net. So it's 2-2, a defensive mistake. You would have to say that Courtois was the reason behind that. And then a typical Barcelona move. Two squared balls end up with Neymar picking up his hat-trick in the 65th minute. Now, if there was any better way to, uh, to kind of put a player in the shot window... It's by doing that. And then, of course, just a couple of minutes later, after he's picked up his hat-trick, they make the change of all changes. Neymar goes off. Hat-trick player goes off. On comes Lionel Messi. If only we had that wealth of talent at, uh, at Chelsea Football Club right now. But they're actually able to pick up a fourth here. Messi with a breakaway. JT and Ivanovic just don't have the pace to cope with Leo and he's going to race away make it 4-2 and finish the game off in style so we pick up a defeat from Barcelona away but it's a nice test of where we are as a side obviously if we hadn't made that many mistakes defensively we uh, we would have stood a chance at uh, getting a result from this one but it's pre-season it's just about overall performance rather than result and overall performance wise I was pleased that we were competitive so uh, we are actually going to need to be competitive in the league as well as you can see the board want the league title from us and as you probably can imagine the board want every single uh, every single competition that, that we're in to be won this year that is uh, their outset for the season they want league title FA Cup Capital One Cup and Champions League so we're going in for another striker here one of the more realistic strikers Luis Muriel uh, trying to offer Diego Costa as a straight swap 
first of all because he's worth 13 million so they're valued about the same but it's a case of whether uh, whether Udinese value Diego Costa around uh, or value Diego Costa's in potential importance to the first team uh, as compared to Luis Muriel but another player we're looking at is Quadro Asamo if you saw the stats in, uh, in just before we made this bid he is very very suited to a centre mid a holding centre mid role as well as playing out wide on the left or even cover at left back I personally think he can cover at centre mid I think he's got the uh, the ability to do that I've played with him on ultimate team a lot I'm very very keen on him as a footballer and I would like to bring him into the club because Frank Lampard has retired so uh, we're looking to get a replacement in that role Michael Essien isn't as young as he used to be and as you saw there Lars Bender is another player we're looking at to potentially fill that role of course we've got Ramirez and Arturo Vidal as our starting two holding mids so any player that comes into that position will only be a rotational player not a uh, an out and out first teamer so we don't necessarily need a world beater but someone that's going to be able to to purposefully and practically fill that role whenever we need to do so and uh, as you can see we're getting a cash off a bid now from Borussia Dortmund for Diego Costa 15 million pounds is the counter offer I'm going to put in 50 million is a nice figure it's uh, something that will help us build in other areas and of course if uh, if Diego Costa gets used as bait in one of the other potential moves we've used him in then all the better but that's going to bring this particular episode to a close guys please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind that'd be absolutely superb you guys have shown the channel some huge support through the team of the year week especially with the uh, the little transfer updates that we uh, that we did just to kind of keep you uh, in the loop with what was happening with the Chelsea career mode so if you were uh, you missed the last uh, you missed the last transfer update video I'll leave a link to that on screen underneath the thing where it says previous episode we did make a massive transfer in that if you uh, if you haven't seen it do check that out because there was one huge huge offer that went through that is crucial and uh, integral to the way we're going to go forward with this Chelsea career mode on an attacking front but uh, that's going to bring this one to a close so if you aren't subscribed to the channel already please feel free to do so there will be a link as an annotation on screen over that subscribe button and in the description and feel free to follow me on Twitter as well at Chisnoy Gaming there will be a link to that down below as well but thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you tomorrow